Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our third ARI workshop for the 2020-21 proposal cycle. Um, as you can see, we're going to be videotaping this today so that we'll have an access online. Um, we have uh, Morale Kosmichin from Pre-Award who will be speaking with us today, and we also have um, Lana, I'm not going to try, <laughs> uh, who is our compliance officer who will be speaking today, and we have Nathan Z Zanoni from Fresno State Foundation, and then of course Bill or Arisian and myself, Carrie. So without further ado, I will ask Morale to come up and she will be talking a little bit about um, Pre-Award. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Carrie said, this is our third ARI workshop, and we thought that talking about pre and post-award processes are crucial to make sure your ARI submission is a smooth one. So who are, what, we're, what we do is the Division of Research and Graduate Studies through the Research and Sponsor Programs Office, we provide assistance to you um, in pursuit of research and contract activities during the pre-award stage. So during your submission, we have grant managers that are assigned to your colleges. For Jordan College of Ag, it's my sophomore, I'll kiss my hand, assigned to you. So um, we provide assistance and technical expertise on uh, providing the submission process and procedures in place. So we have a dean, um, as most of our colleges do, um, Dr. James Marshall. Under that, our director is Douglas Carey. And as I mentioned, we have three grant managers. Each one of us are assigned to an academic college as well as a um, other uh, offices and departments in the university. We also have research analyst Edgar Perea and our administrative support coordinator Tim Tamarina. And our compliance officer is Lana Valdasaro. Um, before I go into the submission process and talking about pre-award to you, uh, we're gonna talk about bit of research compliance and see what that is and how it's related to your submission, making it smoother. So I'm gonna invite Lana here so she can talk about research compliance. Thank you, Merle. And um, so my full name is Svetlana, but I just go by Lana, which is <laughs> what you do. <laughs> um, and uh, so as Merle mentioned, we do have a compliance office now. Um, it's been established, it's been, um, since summer of 2017, and so it's been two and a half years of just getting uh, compliance established um, in this university, making it um, pervasive, making sure everyone is aware that we do have compliance on campus and that we do have an um, RCO, Research Compliance Officer, which is me. And um, so what is research compliance? So basically, research compliance, it it's an umbrella term. It encompasses everything from um, human subjects protection to animal subjects protection to expert control compliance with, in terms of international collaborations to drones research to biosafety and radiation safety and everything that um, uh, is under the purview of um, environmental health and safety. So, um, so compliance is very much involved with all of our institutional ethics committees or our compliance committees. So our institutional review board, our institutional animal care and um, use committee, our biosafety committee, our radiation safety committee, we do have a um, unmanned aerial systems committee. And um, so each committee does have a chair responsible for overseeing um, these committees and they do meet um, at least twice per semester. It's mandatory through our academic policy manual. And um, they do everything from reviewing protocols submitted by faculty members, um, and they approve or disprove these protocols, uh, these research projects. Um, and so um, why is research compliance important? Well, um, not only does compliance um, entail overseeing homegrown research, but it's, it's also active in terms of uh, federally funded uh, research projects, uh, st uh, state funded research projects, as well as local agencies. So um, all of these um, federal, state, and local agencies have numerous compliance checks that must be made, these assurances that we have to provide to these agencies that we will do once we procure these um, 
grants and once we receive these um, uh, funding, once, once our faculty receive funding, and um, what they must do in terms of uh, keeping that funding and um, whether it's a multi-year project or just a one-year project, like I said, we make assurances that we will provide um, all persons involved in that research project with uh, responsible conduct of research. If animals, uh, if animal subjects will be utilized, that we have gone through uh, the process of submitting um, the protocol to our animal IACUC uh, Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, and that it, it has been approved by our, our Animal Care Committee. So I know in Ag, um, we do utilize um, farm animals, and so everything that comes with making sure that our animals are being, um, that uh, the conduct of the research will be uh, met with, uh, with eth ethically and with, with the welfare of our animals, as well as um, if we do decide to do research with human subjects, we protect um, uh, the humans that will be uh, uh, used in our research. And I know in ag, uh, drones research right now is very popular and becoming inc incredibly pervasive. And um, we do have, like I said, a, dro uh, a drones committee and a chair. So uh, all, of, all of that research also has to go through um, that committee to make sure we receive approval to conduct the research before we move forward. Um, and yeah, so we, you know, everything from making sure we uh, submit uh, conflict of interest, we file those forms, to making sure our uh, faculty and students and staff, all persons involved in the research, will undergo, um, uh, whether it's human subjects protection training, animal subjects protect pr protection training, or RCR training, responsible conduct of research training. And we do, as an institution, subscribe to Collaborative Institutional Training Initiative, or CITI program. And so this program is free of charge to all persons on campus. And um, it is a research compliance and ethics training. Um, and it's, uh, it's nationally known, it's internationally known program. And currently it's the only one available to even meet these um, uh, compliance requirements, uh, especially in terms of um, NSF, NIH, NEFA, uh, they do have these requirements that all participants must undergo responsible conduct of research. Um, and I already mentioned I'm the RCO, and uh, please do not hesitate to contact me at any point, even if it's just an idea um, that you have in mind and you're not sure about, okay, what, um, what will this project entail? I know I'll be utilizing um, animals, but I'm not sure um, who's what, um, who's in charge of that, where do I submit our, my protocol, uh, how do I um, uh, obtain approval before I uh, before my project commences. Uh, so I am a resource, please use me because I do work very closely and sit on these committees myself. So um, please know that I am available to you and I am in the Thomas Administration Building in room 121. And uh, what can I do for you? Uh, like I mentioned, ma uh, to make sure that we fulfill all of our requirements for federal, uh, state funding, uh, local funding, as well as just homegrown research, because um, we do have a lot of that going on. A lot of our faculty members and um, students, we have a lot of homegrown, amazing research on campus. And many times our faculty don't even know that, oh wait, um, my student will be utilizing animals in this project. I didn't know we had to uh, get approval. I didn't know I, uh, my student had to do this uh, specific training and um, that they, for example, that the RCR training um, has to be maintained. It's good for four years. It has to be renewed. Human subjects research is mandatory, actually. Many faculty don't know that. Well, no, even if there is no funding, you have to, <laughs> you have to, yes. Well, all in terms of human subjects research, it is mandatory um, uh, for uh, all persons involved in the conduct of that research. So, uh, faculty, fellows, students. Well, I just got concerned there for a minute. You said everybody, and I'm like, I, I have done. Oh, I, I apologize. I meant all persons involved in the conduct of that specific project. Yes. So, if they will be actively involved, then they must undergo the training. 
No, but that's a wonderful question. Yes. Uh, I was uh, trying to study the grant for cancer and the cancer society, and mm -hmm. it goes to the Fresno Foundation, and it was under Dr. Marshall's name. I want to know if it's under your committee, like research accompaniments, or not. Uh, Fresno Foundation. Fresno Foundation is. What is this? It says Fresno. California State University Fresno Foundation. Yes, that is us. We are uh, yes. Exactly, and um, so we are, uh, our federal white assurance is under uh, California State University Foundation. I know it's a little con um, convoluted because sometimes they'll say uh, CSU Fresno and sometimes they'll say CSU Fresno Foundation, but it's the same thing. I, yeah, so. um, and uh, when is compliance information important? Well, <laughs> I'm biased, but I think it's always important. <laughs> um, um, like I said, um, the main thing for compliance is making sure our uh, faculty are protected, our students are protected, our funding is protected, and um, we do <clears throat> all of the assurances we make in this, at, at the initiation of the project that we follow through on all of these assurances and we make sure that we do indeed meet um, all of these compliance checks and we, uh, as they are, um, a lot of these policies and regulations are ever changing. Yeah, I'm, please use me. I, I'm here for a reason. Don't hesitate and uh, do please tell your colleagues that I am available for any and all help. Yes, Carrie. I think the most important thing that you said there was that you're protecting our funding. And um, I just wanted to let people know that I have been on a university campus before where compliance was not met. Um, and it, uh, canceled USDA funding for a number of years, like for, for four years. And not just for that person on campus. If you are not in compliance, it could affect all funding from that funding source on campus for um, extended length of time. So we do it's want to get to It's unfortunate, but it does happen. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that because so it, um, as a lot of the times there's a saying that says it's not a problem until it's a problem. So we think, oh, you know, I'll be fine. And then, boom, there's an audit, there's something, and suddenly it's a problem. <laughs> and, and everyone's scrambling to figure out, why didn't we do this? Why, why wasn't there anyone to tell me that I needed to do this? So uh, a lot of the times, it's not so much that we don't want to be in compliance, it's that uh, it's just not, not knowing. Honestly, many, many times it's not understanding and just being ignorant of the fact that, okay, I do have this resource, I just didn't know. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. And, um, yeah, remember, <laughs> remember you do have me. <laughs> thank you, Lana. Thank you. So, as Lana mentioned, um, we want to be preventive, not reactive, when we are submitting proposals and then managing if there are any issues coming up. So, specific to ARI, um, what we do best is your budget and budget requirements. Um, we, as an office, have many managers that have experience creating budgets. So what we do best is your budgets, but it's not the only thing we do. So I want you to think about your proposals always, who, what, when, where, why, how. That is the summary. And you're always thinking about when you're building it and then putting a project summary together, these are the hitters you should be thinking about in layman terms for what needs to happen. So we have a project information form in our, on our campus that is an internal form that needs to get approved. And this little uh, blurb here is the compliance aspect of that. The reason we talked about research compliance first is because it's heavily linked into how we collect this information. So we're gonna go through this right now and I'm gonna do it um, slide by slide, so I'll stop and then this slide, so if you have any questions, we'll answer them and then move on to the next one and so on. So who will be working on your project is extremely important. Personnel effort is usually the 80, 90% of your budget in most uh, cases. So we are looking to see if you're gonna be receiving reimbursed release time on this grant, if you're gonna have some overload on this grant or summer pay, depending on the guidelines of the proposal. ARI being very specific, um, you know, they allow you to do certain things at a certain time. So we'll be asking you these questions. Are you going to have students working with you? Any clerical staff working with you? Existing staff? New staff? All of those questions we'll be asking as we sit down and discuss them with you. Um, once we do that, 
what will you what will you need to get it done is the next question because besides the effort that you need to put in perhaps you need to purchase an equipment if it's allowed by the guidelines if that's the case again we're going to be discussing because you cannot just purchase any equipment i'm actually working on a jcast um, question right now where a industry partner would like to purchase the equipment and put it on our campus here we cannot just say okay let's put it anywhere power requirements are important the size of the equipment is important facilities needs to approve it so those questions again we're going to ask you when will these activities occur is the next one ari uh, campus one a system one is a three-year project so it has to be within those time periods sometimes you have specific aims and goals that perhaps go for a four-year or five-year so we will discuss it to bring your projects down to that um, timeline period perhaps to maybe do a pilot project or a start a smaller version of the project and then move it forward. Where will the work be done is also important. Um, ARI, uh, they value, I think, at the state level collaborative partnership work. So you would like to probably encourage your colleagues from other UCs, CSUs to work with you. So we need to figure that portion out as we are creating your budgets because um, there's more paperwork involved than we do that. You have to get their clearances from their institutions. If it's an industry partner, which is highly recommended, again, you have to talk to these companies, and sometimes they take a little bit longer than a university getting those approvals in place and so on. So those questions are always very important. What are you trying to accomplish also? The why is important. The reason we do this is we are also asking you those compliance questions, the conflict of interest, the special compliance, the human subjects, the animals, the drones, school aid children, perhaps you're working with them. If that's the case, we need to very quickly notify our HR offices because there are background checks needs to happen. Again, we will be talking to our research compliance officer, making sure she has plans in place to be able to collect this information. And how long will it take? How much of yours? Others times? Again, it's a, a narrative that we'll be building with you. Um, for that, we need to sit down and discuss it. Um, we are happy to do it over the phone as well, via email, whatever works for you. But without answering these questions, we cannot build a budget for you. So it's important that you contact us early enough. Our next slide, I'm gonna to talk to you about some deadlines that we built in for you to assist you so that we can meet those timelines. But do you have any questions about this section? And I know you had a question about the Fresno Foundation versus the university. So California State University Fresno Foundation is the fiscal agent for the university. 99% of all sponsored programs and contracts will go through the foundation. Um, we have some mandates, some of our awards go through the university, but they are very rare. So they are our fiscal agent and we will use their name. So they are managing your funds for you, but they are doing it on behalf of the university. Okay, any questions on this? And for release time and overload and so on, again, we'll be pulling payroll information for you, specific, accurate numbers, and we'll do it for the foundation staff too, if you're working, your center staff and so on. So we'll go ahead and build that budget. So the ARI process, again, there is, this is very specific to this call itself. There is an intent to apply, and that should be done via email. Um, as the principal investigator or your co-principal investigator, if they wish to do so as well, they should email the Larissian. And then if they can remember to copy myself and uh, your department chair and carry, it'll be great. Now, Bill has been wonderful. He's forwarding everything to us. But please, if you could do that, uh, we would really appreciate it. Within your email, the subject line, and Carrie is gonna talk about this a little bit uh, later again. Make sure you have the ARI subject line so we know it's specific to this call. Um, as you know, the system one is coming up. Your deadlines is November 10th. It's a Sunday by 11.59 p.m. Um, and then the campus one and the seed grant ones. So let us know which one you want to apply for, your name, your department, your college again. Um, ARI is um, encouraging for collaborative work through colleges and different academic fields as well. So by all means, this is not only for Jordan College of Ag. College of Science and Mathematics, Lyle's College of Engineering, we are hoping our faculty members can collaboratively work together and submit these proposals. A brief working title that can be changed. We are not gonna make you hold on to that, but please let us know what it is so we can sort things easier. 
Um, there are priorities on the guidelines listed for ARI. We'll go ahead and let us know which ones those are and a brief description of your proposal. Again, just the in short intent, it doesn't have to be complicated, but it will allow us to know you are interested in submitting. Once you do that, and please do that as soon as you can, obviously if you're submitting a system one, um, if you can let us know right away. Um, we have a spreadsheet we have created in our office as well that we are keeping track of and the College of Ag has access to. So they are checking those so we can verify them. But in order to meet our deadlines, what I wanted to do this year was by January 13th, contact me so I can schedule a meeting with you for drafting a budget. Your deadlines for ARI is coming up in February. This gives us enough time to build those budgets. So in those meetings, what I'm going to be doing, asking those questions to you, developing the budget and the project information form. There are some documents ARI is requesting from you, specifically current and pending support documents that our office will populate for you based on your submission records, your award records that we keep for you, and also reading your match documentation. Uh, Nathan is going to talk to you about this a little bit later on as well. It's crucial that we get this right at the beginning, at least securing the paperwork that you need, the plan that you have for the match, because it's going to be crucial at the awarding stage. And if you don't have this done properly, it's going to slow everything down. And I'm sure Carrie is not going to like me when that happens. So, um, so I want to make sure we get this all done. Our whole office is going to be working on the ARI process. So um, obviously, I will take care of Jordan College of Ag, but any other colleges. And we'll, with, through teamwork, we're going to make sure about 20 to 30 submissions are taken care of. Uh, Yes, sir. The deadline for intent, did you say November 10th? The intent is whenever, the, there's a November 10th deadline for the system one for ARI, which is coming up, which is a pre-proposal stage for that one. Um, it's a concept proposal, it's short. Um, for that, you don't necessarily have to contact me, but we would like to know that you are submitting one. For budgeting purposes, I can draft one for you if you like, um, but it's not a requirement for the budget narrative. So if, but if the intent part, even if it's due February, please do so right away. Yes. No, only system one, because the system one, once the system reviews it, they will let us know if they would like to have you submit a full proposal. It'll be an invite only based. So if you're interested and the system one is again, Kara's going to talk about this more, but at minimum it's seventy-five thousand dollars a year. Goes maximum one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Whereas campus has no minimum ceiling wise, it's just a maximum of 150. Okay? And then once all of this done, I would like to get our internal reviews and everything uh, done so I can submit everything to carry by January 31st. I want to get everything to our internal system, which is the grant launch system. So this will allow us to do that um, because if we don't have those internal approvals started, initiated, um, it will not uh, be um, helpful for you for your infrared submission because Carrie will be checking on those. So we want to take them and take care of them. Any questions on this? Yes. Um, I, I, I know we're going to cover system campus and seed separately and, and in more detail, but it's important to know that you are actually eligible to apply for a seed grant and a campus grant and or a system grant all at the same time. I don't think anybody's ever applied for three, but you can apply, for example, to a system grant and a campus grant, and it can be relatively the same proposal. You obviously can't run both if you're awarded both, but it's important to know that you're not restricted to one type of ARI proposal each year. And particularly for new faculty, we've had occasion where a new faculty has uh, applied for a seed as they are uh, obliged to do and also and or a campus or a system. So you do have a lot of flexibility and, and it's important everybody is aware of that. And we're here to support you in what you want to do. So, <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. So ARI challenges, I think the biggest one is lack of communication between collaborating offices. So if you have UC partners, other CSU partners, industry partners, we need to know those right away 
and it helps us to start working on them, even if you may not have a budget or a proposal done or drafted yet. Um, last minute submissions do happen. We don't encourage them, um, but uh, you know emergencies do come up. So we are here to work with you in a team environment. So we will try to do our best. But if, uh, you know, if you don't get your intent in on time and you don't contact me for the budgeting meeting on time, then your submission intent is gonna be on the bottom of that list and we're gonna try to get everybody else done before we can get to you. So um, last minute submissions again, it's also up to the Jordan College of Ag to let us know if that's gonna be allowed. We're gonna do our best to work with you, but that is a big challenge, although as I'm told, Last year was an amazing year. We did not have any of those challenges. So we are hoping we're gonna have a repeat year. Um, so that's why we had three meetings and we are recording this presentation. Missing required documentation is important. As you're gonna see with Terry, there are a lot of documents you're uploading and attaching. I will be checking for those, but if you don't contact us on time, we may be running out of time. We may not be able to get it from the industry partner that you need. So please, again, that's a big challenge. There are a lot of moving pieces going on um, and we wanna make sure your application, when it gets to Carrie's level, as she's checking, everything is in there. So it's a smooth submission. And unsecured match obligations, we're gonna be talking about match quite a bit today. <laughs> it's a big challenge because if your proposal was awarded, but you cannot secure your match, your award will not be moving forward. Um, and has happened before in the past, and that's a very painful conversation we have to have with a faculty member to say, well, we cannot move forward with your award because your match is not coming in properly on time or whatever it may be. So please think about your match, who you should be partnering with. Um, we can assist you. Um, Carrie and Bill are great. They're looking for industry partners always. So if you need assistance, let us know right away so that we can talk about these obligations and in, again, a preventive manner, not a reactive manner, and you're trying to scramble and trying to find cash match for your in-kind match for you. Any questions on this slide? Okay. And in conclusion, <laughs> a few points to remember. So we wanna make sure to contact us early on this intent to apply. Um, it's crucial. Again, if you go back to your office today, if you know you're gonna submit a campus, please do so. You can still do a draft title. You know, we can change those all around but we at least know you're interested, so we can contact you as well if something comes up or we need to triage. Read the guidelines, please. Um, it, college has done a great job. It's in your binders, folders. Please read them. We do read them for you, but again, um, it's gonna be helpful as you create your narrative, your summary, and discuss budgets with us and what you need and how you're gonna be implementing your project. And again, review match requirements and obligations. I cannot. I have to emphasize this over and over again because we want to make sure you're getting um, these requirements down. It's 25% cash, 75% in kind. We can still discuss those. Nathan's going to do a great job of discussing them again about in kind and so on. But please um, remember these as you start building your proposal. Any Thank you. questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Nathan is Foundation Financial Services, and he handles post-award. So I'm Nathan Zanoni, uh, I'm here with Foundation Financial Services. Some of our uh, duties and responsibilities um, over at the Foundation um, relate to setting up the cost center, um, the accounting, uh, in terms of payables and receivables, uh, we do a lot of purchasing and procurement when it comes to the various grants and contracts that are awarded and come through our office. Uh, we also review timesheets uh, related to, you know, that come through additional employment, 
uh, release reimbursement time. Um, if you're a faculty member and you're released on a specific project, um, we handle uh, monitoring and tracking equipment that is purchased, whether it's an ARI grant or another type of grant in general. Um, so we, we also, if you have a sub-award within your ARI approved uh, budget, uh, we have uh, Shua who's in our office and uh, she handles uh, preparing uh, the sub-award if you're going to partner with another uh, company or higher education institution or university, for example. So these are all you know, services you know, that we provide along with uh, the monthly reports that go out from our office, whether it's for an ARI project, for your ARI award, or for the cash match funds that may relate to your ARI award. So these are just you know, some of the activities and uh, the processes that we handle uh, each and every day for the various awards. Now, specifically, when it comes to ARI, um, once you're, you know, you, you receive that letter uh, regarding, uh, you know, receiving that ARI award, um, then the next step obviously has to do with the various forms that need to be filled out, whether that be the cash match forms or the in-kind uh, verification forms, and most importantly, to do with the letters of support and commitment that go along with the verification forms we need. And so when we're talking about ARI, the match is a critical component and a core component of receiving the ARI funds. And so if, for example, cash match, we could be uh, referring to, like Morale talked about, an industry partner. You know, an ARI highly encourages and recommends industry partners or local companies to come to the table and, you know, have that professional collaborative relationship, you know, and build upon it. And so uh, that's important. Also, you know, you could receive funds from the Department of Water Resources or the California Department of Food and Ag. Uh, also, you know, Oreo Ag, uh, Paramount Farms. I'm just, I'm just providing some names of uh, different sources that provide a cash match for ARI funds. We have even have companies like Verizon Wireless. So these are all um, entities and companies and funding agencies uh, that, you know, collaborate on the ARI project in terms of providing that match, which is such a critical component. And as we discussed before, for a campus and system project, the cash match percentage is 25%. So that, that's also another thing you know, to keep in mind. Now, again, when it comes to cash match, for example, there are, you know, as far as the letter of commitment that should be provided, depending on who's providing it. So if industry partner you're working with is saying, you know, I want to provide, you know, $10,000 of cash match towards that ARI award, but they haven't given you the check. However, I would, we would highly recommend they provide this financial commitment letter that, that we have an, a sample right here. So we know they're making a commitment. They're pledging these funds and we have this. So this would be considered pending. Obviously, if the entity, the industry partner, provided you with a check, that would be cash in hand that we would have. But if we don't have that check, then at the very least, the very beginning stage, we're going to need this financial commitment letter provided by them, and it should be on their letterhead, and it should be spelled out exactly what they're committing to, and that they understand you know, how their funds are going to impact the ARI project, and is there, you know, a correlation is there you know is there a benefit here so that's what's you know so you know critical and also it's just not getting receiving the financial commitment letter later than it's up to the project director or the principal investigator then to follow up with that industry partner for example to make sure you know that we receive the funds whether you know you're gonna whether you're reaching out you know to Verizon Wireless or you're reaching out to USDA because you received a letter of intent you know, from USDA ARS, you know, but then are they gonna send the agreement, for example? You know, so there's various moving parts. So the follow-up and the follow-through is just as important as receiving this letter. I mean, this letter is great. It's got their signature on it, but now we need to go to the next step. You know, we have the letter, we see what they're saying, but now we need to reach out to them and can need to reach out to them because they need to understand as a partner in the project, their, you know, their commitment here, their funds is, is critical to actually moving forward with the ARI award. If we don't have the match, then really the ARI award is, you know, stopped, you know, it's on hold, it's essentially frozen. So that's what's so important. 
And so when it comes to the in-kind, which is there is a brand new uh, in-kind uh, letter or template that has come out, these are, this was redesigned and you know, uh, revised so we could get a more detailed breakdown of the type of in-kind uh, that's going to be provided you know, by the industry partner or the company, whoever is going to provide the in-kind match. So typically the in-kind match, since the cash is 25%, the in-kind would be 75% because again, we need 100% commitment. And so again, this is an example here of how a letter should be laid out. Now it doesn't have to be exactly like this, you know, word for word or number for number, but this is a good starting point for you to utilize when you're working with that industry partner and you're reaching out to them because they're probably saying, well, what, what do you need? What do you want from me? Well, this is a kind of a sample right here of what we're asking for. In the past, at times, an industry partner would send us a letter for in-kind. It would be, well, you know, I'll commit or pledge, you know, $40,000. And again, uh, you know, in the past, sometimes, you know, things weren't scrutinized like they are now. And so now we're asking for more of a detailed breakdown so we know exactly what type of in-kind service that's being, you know, provided and how much those dollars add up to. And what are the categories, you know, the things they're providing, as you can see from here, you know, lab, technical services, data control, instrumentation. So, you know, we would like a concise, clear breakdown that's complete. And again, they should take pride in what they're providing. And, you know, it should look clean and neat and presentable. So if somebody picks this up later, they'll understand what was really provided versus two sentences that, you know, say, well, sure, I'll provide 40,000 between today and 2021. You know, this gives us a better breakdown and it also states the fiscal year, you know, and, and those various things. Because remember, ARI awards are funded one year at a time. Even though you might get a letter and say, well, it's a three year award, but your funds are only awarded to you one year at a time. If you have a $300,000 project, typically then it's gonna be 100,000 per year. But the, at the end of that specific year, we're then looking at the match again, whether it's cash and in-kind, in order to award year two. And then we're gonna do the same thing at year three. So that's, that's the reason why it's so critical when we're working with the industry partners so they understand if this isn't just busy work, this is something that we require and that the ARI Executive Director, Dr. David Steele, is gonna to need to review these documents as well. Whether it's cash match or in-kind, all these different documents are uploaded to the ARI uh, website and web portal and they get reviewed by the ARI you know, director. So it's important that you know, he understands, Dr. Steele, you know, what's being provided here and how it relates to the project. But again, again you know, it's, just, it's critical on the front end, like Morales said, that we have all these documents in line We've crossed the T's and dotted the I's, and we can understand, you know, what's being provided, you know, in terms of the dollars. You know, again, it's important we check to make sure the dollars are adding up correctly. You know, so that's, you know, it might seem like these little picky things, but that's important because, you know, again, the match is such a critical component for ARI. That's, you know, very important. So, you know, these are things that we can provide to you or your administrative. Um, uh, coordinator within each department can provide you copies of these templates if you need them as a principal investigator or a project director. So, you know, if, if you, you know, and if you can't get a hold of them, you can always contact me and, but we can provide you something so you have an example or a sample to work from within and to build upon. So that's, you know, critically, you know, important. And so, um, you know, so just, you know, keep that in mind and, you know, if you, you know, just remember that. And so again, you know, when you're focusing on the match, whether it's cash match or, you know, in kind, you know, understand that, you know, the, you know, these items are necessary and they are, you know, required, you know, it's not, you know, something, you know, we're not trying to cause busy work. So, you know, just keep that in mind, you know, as you go forward. Other things to remember about cash match, especially when the funds have been, you know, committed or they've been pledged, you still need to spend down the funds. That's, you know, the whole point of the cash match. It's one thing to receive the dollars and, you know, uh, you know, if Oreo Agriculture says, you know, here's a check for $20,000 and we set up an account and we deposit those funds and you're not spending very much of the money, that's going to be an issue because as you are spending or drawing down the ARI funds, 
you need to also be spending and drawing on the cash match. You know, they go hand in hand. We would love to say, you know, as you spend, you know, so much here in ARI, you know, you know, ten dollars, you know, you're spending, you know, a couple of dollars here on cash match. We know it's not going to be a perfect situation. We understand it, you know, that's just not possible. But you also need to keep in mind, you know, if you're drawing too much on the ARI side, you're probably going to hear from me saying, why aren't you spending very much on the cash match side? You know, again, did you forget about the cash match funding? Did you have a student? And whether an undergraduate or graduate student or a research assistant leave and they were paid out of that account. So keep that in mind, you know, you, you're spending the ARI funds, but you also need to spend down the cash match. Because again, when we look at it at the end, you know, we need to see those cash match dollars have been spent down in, in you know, in their entirety, especially if you've drawn and spent down all the ARI funding. So it's, you know, very important, you know, they go hand in hand. It's a, you know, critical component of the process. And so, you know, just keep that in mind. So if you're receiving an email or a phone call from me asking me, you know, why haven't these funds been spent down, you know, in terms of, you know, the ARI funding, that's the reason why I'm, I'm reaching out to you to making sure as you spend it, then we can count it as match. Just having a check in hand or deposit the foundation, you know, we, we can say, yes, up front we have the match, but how much have we spent? How much have we spent down? So that, you know, that's very critical and important. And also to keep in mind, if you have cash match funds, or if you know of another faculty member that may have a project with the California Department of Food and Agriculture, and you're saying, well, my project relates, because remember, there needs to be a direct benefit. There needs to be a direct correlation. If you want to utilize those funds from the California Department of Food and Agriculture or the California Department of Water Resources, the question is, are you a co-PI? Are you the project coordinator on that other project? You need to keep that in mind. It's not enough just to say, well, I think that project may relate a little bit to my scope of work or that proposal. You know, you know, where is the benefit between the two projects? You know, is it that you're desperate for match and you know those funds are available because you're good friends with that other principal investigator or project director? Or are you really part of that other project? So that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes in the past, I will admit that it's been, uh, it's been overlooked a little bit in terms of utilizing other principal investigators and other project directors funds as cash match for your ARI project. So those are things to keep in mind in terms of the relationship and the benefit between your ARI project and that other specific cash match uh, source of funding. Because sometimes cash match can be tough to find. We all know that. I've seen that here in the years I've, I've worked at the foundation. It can be a struggle depending on the project and the situation and maybe you know depending on who you're reaching out to whether it's a, a big funding agency or an industry partner but again it's it's not just about scrambling to say oh yeah i want to utilize those funds for my project but we really need to ask the tough questions up front you know why do you want to utilize those funds are you a part of that project are you the co-pi are you the coordinator you know where is you know where's the where is the relationship? Where is the benefit? So, you know, keep that in keep that in mind. We need to, you know, look for those things, you know, up front. Also, we need to uh, we, we also need to think about uh, when we have the ARI meeting, when we all meet, uh, we're signing the, the ARI cash match forms, we're signing the ARI verification forms. That's when we have the project meeting with your uh, department administrative coordinator the project director, Carrie, Bill, and I. We're all sitting there, we're going over the budget, we're talking about the budget, and so if you have any questions or concerns, you know, that's why we get together and have that meeting before you're allowed to spend the money. Because once we have that meeting, then an email will go out by Carrie to everybody involved who was at that meeting, and then you will receive an approval to expense. So, you know, just be clear of that. And again, even if we don't have the meeting until October 1, remember the start date of ARI projects would still be July 1. It always goes back to July 1 to June 30th in terms of how the ARI cycle works. Uh, essentially, it's based on the state of California's fiscal year. So, you know, keep that in mind because, um, you know, a lot of people do ask, well, you know, I've already missed the season or, you know, I'm, I'm already behind my timeline. But, you know, that's why it's critical, like Morales said, to have all these forms. And, and all the cash match and everything, you know, gathered and in hand and, you know, really ready to go as soon as possible because all that's gonna do is delay your project even more 
based on the timeline in your proposal. You know, so you know, keep those you know keep those things in mind. And also, uh, when we come to ARI, what's also important to remember is a critical core component of ARI is student involvement. So, for example, if you have a project and you have students and they've left the project and now you're thinking, well, I can't find any other students. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do that type of. I'm going to go ahead and do their work, you know, as the faculty member. But maybe it wasn't budgeted that way. Well, first of all, we need to apply the brakes here and find out, you know, how come you were unable to go out and reach out and find additional students? Because really, the core principle and the core values of ARI is really student involvement. And so, once a faculty member calls and says, "Well, the students are have left; they're no longer here at the university," or maybe, you know, or maybe they graduated. Go, well, why aren't you looking for other students? You know, there are plenty of students on this campus, I'm sure, who could benefit from the knowledge and experience and, you know, working on that ARI, you know, project. So before you believe that, you know, you're just gonna do it all yourself and not go look for students or reach out to students who might be interested, you know, you need to talk to us because if you're gonna be, if you're gonna do something like that as a faculty member project director, chances are we're going to have to revise the budget but we're going to need a justification as to why you're doing that you know you know what you know why aren't you looking for students you know does it have to do with your project is it specific to the to the work in, in terms of finding a student because of uh, because of he or she's background i mean you know so keep that in mind as well because a lot of times when it comes to the budget revisions we have an ari budget template and at times we're going to ask for a justification of why you're moving funds from certain categories, depending on how much is being moved and and really how it goes back to what you proposed. If you're if you're now going to do something that's quite a bit different than what you proposed in your ARI proposal, then we're going to ask you to justify it in terms of you know a written justification in terms of the changes you're going to propose and that we're going to review. You know, so also you know keep those you know things in mind. You know they're you know they're very important and you know we're looking at those things and also um, I think what's you know Dr. David Still has mentioned before the industry connection and the industry partnership with local companies is really where we should look first I mean sure there's the USDA there's the California Department of Food and Ag there's the California Department of Water Resources you know there's all these big financings but again I think we should try you know our best to reach out to the industry partners and you know provide that collaboration you know in terms of you know really establishing a strong connection with them so hopefully you know they understand the ARI program and the processes and the procedures and that maybe once we reach out to them and they understand it maybe they're more likely to fund in the future if they really see a strong benefit you know from the dollars they're providing for the projects so you know it's just making that connection you know and establishing that relationship so you know keep, keep that in mind how local is local well, when you say that, do you mean like, are you referring to like maybe just Fresno or are you talking about maybe just the entire Central Valley, maybe Bakersfield and Modesto or is that what, well, is that uh, what you're saying or? The, the reason why I'm here is I, I have, I got approached when I was at a conference this summer. Okay. And the company, um, it was a small company. They're in Monterey. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that be considered local. I mean, it's not, yeah. yeah it's okay. If, if it's in the if it's in the ag industry, yeah. in California, that, that's fine. Okay. And and actually, I think that um, when we were up in Sacramento, somebody was doing a project with potatoes and collaborating. Idaho. I don't, it wasn't Idaho, that which, which which kind of struck me as odd. Right. I think it was like Utah or something. But they were collaborating um, with a company in Utah okay. to get to get funding, and that's fine because. We do grow that commodity here in California as well. We're just using their expertise and their funding to help us out here. So that's not that's not an issue okay. as long as it's verifiable and if it's going to be cash match that they are going to they are going to be sending a check made out to Fresno State Foundation for your project so that maybe can set up a cost center for it. Okay. And also keep in mind with ARI. Um, another component is the annual assessment that those of you who have worked on ARI or may have not, there's an annual assessment that needs to be done uh, 
uh, it, so if it's a three-year project, this annual assessment needs to be done each year, and it you know needs to be done typically within 45 days after the end of the, 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 end of the uh, June 30th you know, fiscal year. And also at the very end of your project, ARI requires a final report, and that typically needs to be submitted within 90 days after the project ends. And so, you know, these things, you know, are important uh, to complete. I mean, especially, for example, if you have a three-year project and you haven't done your annual uh, report or annual assessment for year one, well, then we're not going to move to year two until you've completed it. So, you know, you need to keep that in mind, um, you know, and you can give all the excuses you want, but, you know, I've heard all the excuses already, so we don't need to go there again. But uh, so it's incredibly important as you're working on the project, you know, it's May or June, you know, start preparing now. You know, I mean, we know summer's coming, you know, school will be out in May, but, you know, you need to get that annual assessment done. So that's another important component of ARI, you know, uh, that it does exist. And again, Dr. David Still, um, the ARI executive director, he's looking at those um, annual assessments and final reports. And remember, ARI, you know, we have multiple campuses now. So it doesn't necessarily look good if Fresno State uh, project directors or principal investigators or faculty members, you know, are delinquent on their reports and they're not getting submitted. You know, it doesn't shine the best light on the situation. So, you know, it's critically important, you know, that that be completed. I mean, it's one thing for us to award you the money, but again, you've got to do the assessment and also the final report. You know, those again are critical components of the entire process. The other thing I'd like to mention uh, that I didn't mention before, but ARI does have a policies and procedures manual. This is a copy here, but you can find it on the ARI calstate.edu website. So if you ever have any questions or concerns, obviously you can always call or email me at the foundation, but go out to the website and take a look at the ARI policies and procedures manual. And I believe it's a very good and helpful, uh, useful resource if you have any questions or concerns and you're not sure about something. So again, you know, this is out there. This was updated as of July 1st, 2019. So this is current. This is not something that's been sitting on uh, a website or web portal, you know, for five years, you know, and collecting dust. I mean, this is something that the ARI Executive Director, Dr. David Still, you know, uh, updates on a regular basis. And uh, so this is very current. Um, and so, you know, utilize this as a good guide or starting point if you're not sure about something. So um, I've looked over it uh, many times when I, when I don't know the answer or I'm not sure. And there are times, you know, when people call, I don't know all the answers, but I will look and I will search and talk to somebody until I can, you know, figure out the answer and then I'll get back to you. So at the same time, really what I want to say next is if you have a question or if you have a concern, you know, call or email me. Just don't wait and, you know, or, you know, whatever it is, but reach out to the foundation, you know, reach out to me. If, you're, if your administrative department coordinator doesn't know, reach out and give me a call. And, you know, if you want to go over your budget or if you want to discuss something, you know, that's why we're here to provide you with good customer service. But again, call me or send me an email. Typically, I'll try to get back to you, you know, in a timely fashion, you know, hopefully within 24 hours or less. Um, so, you know, do that, you know, reach out to us. That's why we're here. We're here to help you. You know, we're here to help you with your success and with your project. You know, again, if you're not sure about a form or a policy at the foundation, you know, you know, give me a call and, you know, we can work through it. You know, that's, you know, that's why we're here, you know, to, to assist you and again, to, you know, help you out with the process. So hopefully I've provided some good information to you. I mean, do you have any questions uh, for me that, you know, that might need to be answered? Then you can go ahead and ask me. I think one of the important things um, that you were talking about is we have a, we have a really good team on campus right now. We have three new um, coordinators in our centers. We've got Yvette at CIT. We've got Allison Baldus. Um, at IFA, and we have uh, Rebecca White in Versi, and they are part of our team as well, and we'll talk a little bit about them later on, but they're working closely with Nathan, they're working closely with Bill and I, they work with Morale, to, and so we've got, a, we've got a good team here, and we're here to help you so that um, we can succeed in our, uh, in our proposals during this period. 
Thank you very much, Nathan. Very well. Um, we can take about a five to ten minute break now if you guys like. We can stretch our legs a little bit. i got to set up a, a little bit of website. There's some refreshments in the back. I don't have... Alrighty then. So we're back. And these are our campus contacts for ARI. We have um, Dr. Bill Arisian, who is the campus coordinator for Fresno State. Myself, Carrie DeBartelaven, and I am the campus point person. We have Dr. Dennis Neff, the Dean of the Jordan College of Agricultural Science and Technology. And we've gone through the Division of Research and Graduate Studies um, with Doug Carey, Morales, Mitchin, and um, Lana. And we also have Foundation Post Award with Nathan Zanoni. But we also have your research center contacts. We have the Center for Irrigation and Techno uh, for Ir Irrigation Technology. We have uh, Dr. Charles Hill Hillier. He is the new center director. And we have Yvette Archuleta, and she is the center administrative co coordinator. And she handles all of your paperwork when you get awarded. She will reach out to you, and she'll um, get you get with you so that you can get all of your documents together and get your match set up and get your final budget summary and she will um, actually all of the coordinators will schedule your uh, project meeting. The, the Department of Viticulture and Enology uh, Research Center we have uh, Dr. Stefan Summer and he is the center director there and he's been with us for about a year and we have Rebecca White and she is the center administrative coordinator there and we also have the Institute for Food and Agriculture, and we have Dr. Susan Pheasant, and she's the center director there. And we have Allison Baldus, and she is the center admin coordinator there. The templates that we were talking about earlier, all of your, your admin coordinators have access to all of those templates. So if you need a template to send to a match partner, just let your center admin coordinator know and they can email it to you and it, it'll be in it should be in a, a word document so it can be changed around by them um, it, it's more a guideline this is what we, they want to see um, so they'll get it take they'll get it together for you again we want to touch on emailing your intent to apply um, we did get a notification today from somebody who is who just let us know today that they are in the middle of doing a system proposal, but we didn't have an intent to apply for them. So we've had to kind of scramble around and make sure that they're on our list for that. It, it's, it's good for us to know that, you, that you're in, intending to apply so that we can check in on you and confirm along the way if we haven't heard from you by say the middle of January, um, if you're still interested in applying. So we, we just kind of need to know and we can help you with any areas that you might be having difficulty with, but reach out to us and let us know that you're going to, that you want to apply. So you want to talk a little bit about Agricultural Research Institute, Bill? Yeah, so um, ARI, for those of you who are not aware, actually originated on the Fresno State campus about 22 years ago. Uh, it, it's supported by state general funds and the core message and the core importance and the sort of emphasis of ARI is that in order to receive funding, you have to identify a one-to-one -one match with industry. So it's meant to uh, promote industry university partnership and research that pertains specifically to California agriculture. Um, there is uh, a list that, 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 that Carrie will show you a little bit later that, that talks about some of the areas that are covered uh, under ARI. But it's a fairly broad list. Uh, and if you go back and look at some of the research that's been done over the last two decades, and you can do that online at the, at the ARI uh, CSU site. And we also have copies of last year's annual report, which features quite a number of uh, articles about different uh, uh, research activities. You get a really good sense of, of, of what's been funded in the past. It's a fairly competitive process. Uh, but again, I know that you're gonna be hearing this a lot the, the one to one external match is really what drives the the uh, the ARI program and that's what makes it unique 
you know, Fresno State isn't a land grant university, obviously, nor are any of the other participating universities uh, uh, within ARI, of which there are four, including two more that are considered uh, associate campuses, uh, law, uh, Monterey Bay and Humboldt. And then the other core original four campuses, as you know, are Fresno, Chico, uh, Pomona, and uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So it is a system-wide program. In other words, any campus within any of the 23 campuses of Fresno State is eligible to apply for ARI funds, although if they are outside of those core six campuses, they have to uh, utilize one of those campuses as the primary, as the primary campus and recipient. Uh, we've actually had some uh, system grants awarded to Sonoma State, yeah, so which is you know, kind of interesting. You would think that they would not be necessarily as interested in, in ARI, but it just goes to show you that, that anything's possible with ARI if it falls within the within the within the rules. So it's a good program. Uh, obviously, you you folks know that. I've been involved with it for about five years, and uh, it's growing. These are the uh, research priority areas. You'll see this when you apply for funds. It'll they'll pop up, and you'll sort of check one off um, and talk a little bit about about it more in your in your actual application. But you can see that they uh, they they touch on on quite a number of areas relevant to uh, to California Ag. So we've got the three types of funding. We've got the system competitive research funding, um, which requires a pre-proposal, which the deadline to submit a pre-proposal is coming up on November the 10th, um, just before midnight. Um, the funding is a maximum, uh, a minimum of $75,000 requested up to a maximum of $150,000 per year for three years. Um, there's, you does require collaboration with a UC, a CSU, uh, other university or, in, or industry is required. Again, this has a one-to-one -one match uh, requirement, but what's new about system competitive funding is they have lowered the match requirement to 25%. It used to be 50% cash match, but now the cash match requirement is 25% with the other 75% being in-kind match. Um, then we have the campus competitive research funding. Again, there's no minimum request for that. Uh, we've seen requests as low as $15,000, $20,000, uh, $12,000 a year, um, up to a maximum of $150,000 per year. The, again, the awards are generally a little bit less than $75,000 a year, uh, generally in the $40,000 to $60,000 range. Um, Pre-proposal is not required. Again, the one-to-one -one match is required, and the intent to, uh, to apply is required for both system and campus proposals. And one of the things I'd like to mention about the match is, if you're requesting $30,000 from ARI, essentially you're getting $60,000 for your research. Your ARI is giving you 30, and you're getting 25% more in cash and at minimum and another 75% in in kind verifiable in kind match and so your your thirty thousand dollars that you're getting you're you're getting more bang for the buck and it's really important to keep that in mind when we're talking about the match that it helps boost your research. Uh, just trying to do the math in my head. So when you say go back to the previous slide. Oh, yeah, you did. It says funding, no minimum, et cetera, et cetera. That's the funding from ARI. That, that part's not counting the match. Correct. Okay. So yes, again, you're, you're requesting $30,000 from ARI and you've got a funding partner or you've got a grant, uh, USDA grant or um, NSF grant or something that's going to be providing a portion of the cash match and whatever else for, and you can do 100% cash match. We do have some that, that prefer to do 100% cash. It's just easier that way for them rather than trying to verify what in kind match would be. But, well, yeah. Yeah. Was that it? Well, you know, in my head when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about how much money I need for the 
project, and I, and I keep forgetting to divide by two. Well, so, so if you need if you need sixty thousand, okay. So let's do this another way. I'm trying to think of easy numbers in my head, and it's late well, in the afternoon. Fine. If, yes. if I need sixty thousand, I'm asking the ARI for thirty. For 30 yeah. Cash for thirty. Yeah. And, and that that's what I got to keep remembering when I. I'm, I'm sure you guys would straighten me out by the time we got to the end. Oh yeah, but. and that's and that's why morale is here because she's going to help you with your budget, and she's going to ask you how much cash you need, how much you're requesting from ARI, and then on that budget sheet, it's got okay, your cash matches here, your in kind matches here, and any other cash or in kind sources. So you've got several different columns on your on your budget spreadsheet that are gonna take that into account. And that's why it's so important when you're thinking about this to go and sit down with morale and say, okay, this is what I wanna do and this is what I think it's gonna cost me um, in ca you know, it, this is how much cash I'm gonna need for this. And she's gonna help you with the budget. It, one way to look at this is that it actually works both ways. It's a one-to-one -one match. So for example, scenario one is you're approached by industry uh, to support an idea you have on research um, it could be a study, it could be anything. And they said, we have $30,000 to offer you in support of this project. You can then consider, if I have 30,000 in verifiable match, that I could go to ARI and ask for 30,000 more, thereby having 60,000. The trick is how much match can you get? That's how I have people look at it. Alternatively, you could go to ARI as most people do, and say, I have this idea, and I think it's gonna cost about 60,000, but I only need 30, because I'm gonna get 30 more in match. So you're, you're looking at it from that side, but it's the same, it's the same process. The, the best way to look at it is, how much do I have from industry, and can I verify it? Uh, me, I'm a little personal story. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so I'm trying to relearn the process. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It's changed a little bit. It's actually a lot easier to apply now um, because the, the online portal is much, much simpler. Yeah. Uh, much easier. Thank you. Sure thing. So we also have seed grant funding for new faculty and the funding is, uh, you can request up to $10,000. You get two seed grant requests. You can get up to two seed grants in your first three years um, on campus. Uh, if you're a tenure track, tenure track faculty. Um, collaboration match and pre-proposals are not required for the seed funds, but the intent to apply is required. And you can apply for a campus and a seed grant at the same time. Um, it's best to have two different, two different subjects going on, but yeah, you can apply for a campus and a seed grant if you have match and you have somebody that you brought in. Um, in your call for proposals, ARI does now provide new investigator funding. Fresno State does not participate in new investigator funding. None of the other, one, only one other of the member campuses um, uses new investigator funding. Yeah, it's not us. <laughs> what funded proposals have in common? and we've already talked about match, but match is extremely important um, because when you're getting down to the wire and getting into October and you still don't have your match from your award that you were awarded in June, it gets a little critical. So we really like to try and hammer down the match. But your funded proposals are going to have letters of support from your match, from your match donor, or it's already going to be verifiable cash on hand on it with a grant that's already over at foundation. But if your project starts on July 1st of 2020 and your grant that is on account over at foundation ends on July 30th of 2020, we can't use that. We have to, it has to last the year. So, um, yeah, you have to have it for more than a month over there. Um, the, methodology, the methodology is gonna be very, very strong um, and your evidence of economic impact is gonna be strong. It, those, those three things are really going to be working together to help fund a proposal. Did you have anything else you wanna to add to that? 
Okay. Well, actually, just go back a second. Sure. So evidence of economic impact. Um, this is a, it's not a relatively new requirement, but it is one that has received more attention by ARI, by the ARI brass, shall I say. Um, <clears throat> with all the new requirements for not just ARI, but other system-wide initiatives, accountability is important, you know, what level of impact is, is your project having and is your program having? And in particular, in terms of the California uh, agricultural research, you know, what, what impact is that having uh, in an economic sense? And, and so this has become something that everybody looks for as reviewers now uh, on a more priority basis, and I think it's important, and, and I'm glad that, that, that we're seeing more of that. So you'll get asked that in the application. And in the past, it was given a slightly token reference, but now there's opportunity to actually expand on the level of economic impact that your program will or should or might have on California agriculture. And I think that's real important. And, and, and it's a positive step in the approach that ARI is taking in terms of what criteria they're using to evaluate proposals. I review uh, thousands of these uh, uh, applications for ARI, uh, and they really give lots of uh, kind of uh, attention on economic impact. If yes. they didn't really do well, good job in economic impact, how their project is going to contribute, uh, they sometimes prefer not to give any money to that person because they want to see how it's going to impact economically, not whole uh, country, just specifically for California and local community, actually. And then yeah. ARI can take those results and show the governor, they can show whoever, yeah. look what's happening economically, um, always and it, an important. And it keeps us funded. It keeps ARI funded, which keeps us sure. working. And you're correct. That's one of the things that we see quite often. One of the the, um, the reviewers comment on uh, we when you if we send out a conditional award, I would say seventy percent of them they want a little bit stronger evidence of economic impact. So yeah, definitely that's that's there. Thank you for bringing that up, sir. Again, this is the cash match template and. Um, just wanted to show that to you again. If you are submitting for, uh, if you're submitting your pros proposal and getting this cash match template um, with you, with the proposal is a very good thing because that's what, well, that's what the reviewers are watching for. They're, that's what they're looking for. And it's the same thing with the in-kind match template. If you've got a strong in-kind match template and um, everything is still the same in your budget, that's what we're going to use to um, verify your in-kind match. We'll probably reach out to the company and, and ask, is this still valid? And, and they're going to say yay or nay. They'll, we might send them the form to sign, or they'll send us an email saying, yes, we, this, we, we intend to support this at this point. So. So where do I start? Preparing and submitting ARI campus proposals. Um, our soft deadline is going to be February 4th of 2020. All of the forms that are required for your proposal, that's where you're going to start. You're going to go on either our website or the InfoReady website. And when you click on the InfoReady website that you want to submit a proposal, all of your forms are going to pop up and you can download them there. Um, so that you have them to get ready. Uh, don't use the prior year's forms that you may have downloaded the prior year and saved because they won't populate correctly within InfoReady. Um, each one is specific to the year. But again, in the InfoReady website or on our website. The InfoReady re uh, required forms and attachments to upload, uh, most important is gonna be your narrative. It's gonna be a maximum of 10 pages for the narrative, and that is not going to include your staffing and budget narratives. So you're, when you look at your formatting for sections A through E, that's what's, got, that's what's going to be 10 pages. And then you, then you attach your staffing and budget narratives to the end of that. Your budget narrative must match your budget, including your um, match. So 
when you do your budget narrative, you do it for your, your ARI cash, and you do it for your um, cash match, and you do it for your in-kind match. We do have a budget narrative template, um, but it just lays everything out. Um, your references cited, that's, a, that's another upload. Um, the documents required that you can get on an ARI website or on our website is the budget form, and it's specific to the proposal year. If pre-award has not prepared your budget form for you, stop, contact morale, and she'll work on it with you. There's a timeline, there's a current and pending support form, which pre-award will also work with you in. And there's cash and in-kind match verification forms. These are different than the final verification forms if you've been awarded. And they're only required if your cash and in-kind match is in hand. Otherwise, you don't have to upload. If it's, if it's pending cash, um, you don't have to upload those verification forms, but you should upload your letters of, of cash match support or in-kind match support. There's a data sharing use of pre-existing intellectual property, and there's a co-PI letter of commitment that needs to be uh, uploaded for each co-PI. I will also mention that the current and pending support form, um, your co-PIs will need to submit a current and pending support form as well. And your CVs for your PI, your co-PIs, and your collaborators, and the CVs can only be three pages. If it's four pages, I'll just email you and ask you to send me the three page one and I'll upload it. And match and research letters of support. These could be industry letters of support saying what your, um, what your proposal and project could do for them um, and, and how it relates to what they're doing and how it would benefit what they're doing. And then also your, your match letters of support. So how to apply using CSU ARI Info Ready. Let me go ahead and get on here for you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna Google CSU ARI and it's gonna bring you to this website here and you will scroll down. And when you're on this website, take a look at some things and go through and see some of our research highlights. It's pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting things going on there. Um, it's not the easiest website to go through, but it is very um, worthwhile. You'll click on the PI, Act go to the PI Action Center, and this is the page that will come up, and this is for submitting a proposal, and you can also get your call for proposals and your policies and procedures here. So you'll click on submit prepare and submit a proposal and it'll bring you to this screen right here and you'll see ari system campus and seed funding opportunities i believe that this also is available on the um the research and graduate studies website yeah okay so you've got three ways that you can get here you're going to go over here and if you have already submitted proposals in the past, you'll log in. If you have not yet submitted a proposal and you've not registered, you'll click on register. And it's very easy. You just provide your first name, your last name, your email address, and make yourself a password. And click I am not a robot. And then create an account. And you'll get an email stating that you have successfully registered for CSU AOR info, info ready. And then if not, just go ahead and log in. Okay. And then you'll come down here and you will look for if you are doing a system pre proposal, you will click on the system pre proposal. And you'll see here that I've changed the date for um, internally to the 10th of November. But if you're doing a campus or a seed proposal, you'll click on this, campus and Fresno State campus and seed. And over here, you'll see all of the files that you'll need to um, download to complete 
and then upload later on. You'll click on apply and it'll bring you to this page right here and it's uh, you'll fill in your PI details and you'll upload your CV and then close and continue. If you have a co-investigator or two you will add a co-investigator's information and your co-investigator your co-investigator should have provided you with a current and pending support form a signed letter of commitment and their three-page CV and you can add several co-investigators and then you'll close and continue that if you have any cooperators you'll add the cooperator and the cooperator does not require a CV when you click on project information you will go ahead and put in your proposal title there um, it will automatically give you an application ID when you save it you're going to put in your abstract here which is going to be 500 pages or 500 words Whoa. I'm sorry yeah, I know right <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wow. I'm just words. checking to see if everybody's listening <laughs> <laughs> And this is where you're going to select your funding type. It will be campus or seed. Again, we do not have new investigator funding. So we're going to do a campus grant here, and we're going to select two years. What's new this year is CSU ARI is collecting some information, both on the system and the campus of seed awards. And you will open this up, and it will open a new uh, tab for you. And they're asking for some information. They need the project director's name, the project title, and it's only about five pages to go through. Um, Want to know the issue being addressed? It's a little survey, um, your research topic, the knowledge area, the California commodity, and um, submit form or save and resume later. If when you submit the form, you will be emailed to you in a PDF format and you'll download it and save it and you will upload it at the end when it gets to the upload files area. So you've got that information and now we're going to be doing the funding request and say on year one we want to request $30,000 and we're not going to need quite as much for the second year, $25,000. Can this project be segmented or partially funded? You have an option of clicking yes or no. It's up to you. But what I will say and what Bill and I have seen is when you click yes and say how it can be partially funded, especially this coming year, we are really gonna be pressed for money because the past few years we've had a lot of unallocated carryover that we've been able to fund over $900,000 a year in projects. It's not gonna happen this year, and so we have to take into account ongoing projects, and once we take those funds into consideration, what's left over is going to be what we have to provide for new projects. So it could be as little, it could be between three and $400,000 for new projects this, for the coming year. So this is gonna be extremely competitive. If the review committee has gone through and there's $30,000 left or there's $20,000 left and you have a $30,000 project they really want to fund your project if you have put in here that it can be partially funded they will request that I send a, a letter on behalf of Dr. Neff asking if you can partial if you would accept $20,000 um, if we don't if we see no and somebody else has called, clicked yes that's who we're going to go to we're going to ask whoever clicks yes on this first. And, um, and then if nobody clicks yes, if everybody clicks no, then we'll probably start asking around. Really, some, somebody once told me that who's going to, who's going to turn down free money? I mean, if, if it's just $10,000, you can possibly re, re, um, rework things and request more the second year. So it's a good thing to click yes on that. 
you don't have to. This is where you're going to put in your cash match information. And they're wanting to know if it's a, uh, what your cash match is. It's going to be, you're going to pick your, your category here. Say you have a USDA grant on campus and it just got awarded and, but it's in hand, um, put in the donor agency, which would be USDA and a brief description, um, which would probably be best to put in whatever the, uh, the title of that grant is. And then the award number, which would be your uh, the award number and possibly the foundation cost center number. So, and then you'll put in how much it's going to fund for year one. And if, it's, if there's gonna be enough in there, if it's gonna fund for year two as well. Then you'll save the changes. And if that's the sum total of your cash match and you don't need any more of that um, is going to be your total 25% or more, then that's gonna be fine. If you, if you have another match source, go ahead and click the add match and we'll take you through again. Say you have cash in hand for year one, but you, your match is pending for year two. This is what you would do for year two, is add match for year two and it's pending. And this is where you'll add your in-kind match and it's pretty much the same. Select yes and the category is gonna be somebody local and in-kind is always gonna be pending because it's, it's difficult to have services in hand. And maybe it's um, a, local, uh, a local farm that's going to be donating some land use. And that's what you'd put the, the farm name here. And you'd put the land use. And you could put in here C letter of commitment attached. And the value for year one and year two. And the submission date and the award notification date. This is where you're gonna put any of your faculty release time in. And this is where you're gonna be uploading your files. And you will upload your project narrative, your references cited, your timeline of activities, your ARI budget spreadsheet that has been prepared for you by pre-award, and your campus internal budget spreadsheet. And this is actually, we found out earlier this, uh, this cycle that this is going to be really important because this is where compliance comes in. And if you, uh, sub if you upload your PIF here, then I'm going to look at your PIF and I'm going to see that what you're doing has already met compliance. You've already, and it shows us that you've been to pre-award. So we want to see your PIFs uploaded as well. This is where your current and pending support form will go and your cash match verification form and your, and that only pops up if you put that you have cash in hand. And this is your ARI and uh, your match and ARI specific objectives form, your data sharing, your letters of support. So if you have any additional letters of support Scan them all as one PDF because you can you can only upload one and put them in um, an order that kind of makes sense. And this is your appendices and data in support of your proposal. And this is where you're going to upload that research topic and focus that we briefly went through that was up there that gets emailed to you once you submit it. And once you have uploaded everything, I would say save it as a draft and go back and relook at it in the next day if you're not under the deadline or, you know if you're not if you're if you've got time save it if you submit it I can kick it back to you if you've missed something or you can send it to me and I can upload it if something was missing in your narrative that you wanted on there you can send me your whole narrative back a, a whole corrected narrative I can go ahead and delete it for you and upload your updated narrative. 
it's it's pretty easy. I try not to send things back because once they get sent back to you, sometimes um, you guys are busy enough as it is. If you guys can just send me something, it's a whole lot easier for you to just send me something than for you to try and fumble around and figure out how you delete it and then upload it again. So, and then if you hit a glitch in the system, then you're having to deal with that. If I hit a glitch in the system, I just call info ready and, and they help me figure it out. So. Well, one of the advantages that, that Carrie does is she doesn't have a soft deadline. I don't think all campuses do that. And the soft deadline allows her to actually help you ensure that the application is 100% golden and before she sends it in before before you send it in and I mean I, I don't know what the percentages are but she looks at everything and a good number of them have some holes and and she'll plug those holes she'll help you figure out or tell you what you need to do to make it to make it right it's in everybody's best interest for us to have all the applications a hundred percent because during the review process if you have an I two two applications that are identical except one of them is missing one small piece the reviewers are obliged to look at the application that's complete um, that's just the way it works so we want everybody to engage in the review at, at, on the same playing field so to speak one of the things I will say the number one issue with this uh, when you submit to me is the budget and the budget uh, narrative do not match so pay close attention to your budget and your budget narrative a lot of times people forget that they were they had the budget done with with morale and then they're getting into the narrative and they're looking at the budget narrative and they don't have the budget right in front of them working it out or they have tweaked something in the budget and but they didn't put that tweak in the narrative or vice versa and that's so the budget and budget narrative not matching is the number one the number two is the staffing narrative is vague and incomplete so it's really important that you look on the call for proposals and the request for proposals and make sure that you have hit all of the bullet points in both the staffing narrative and the budget narrative. Um, if you're traveling, just don't just say $500 for travel. You need to break down the travel. It even says in there, you break down the travel for, and you need to put travel in. If you're doing a multi-year project, we want to see at least one year where you and a student are going up to the, sac to the PI meeting in Sacramento. Um, it doesn't have to be every year, but we want to see that you are putting in there that you are making sure that there's funds for you and a student to go up and present either a poster or an oral presentation up in Sacramento. We had 35 of our PIs and students up there um, three weeks ago. Uh, we were the only campus with that many uh, people there. so. We were quite proud of that. We were a little bit blown away by it, but we were quite proud of it. So um, we would like to keep that going um, because it's really important. You meet some, you you meet some industry partners up there. They had a whole industry panel up there this last time. So you make a lot of connections at the PI meeting. So it's if it's not written in there at least once, I will email you and I will say this needs to be changed. So. Be a little bit detailed um, on your staffing and budget narratives because those are really important. And since they don't count against your page count, use the use the um, use that. You know, be detailed. Okay, so then then you would just go ahead and submit your proposal, and then I get a notification that you've submitted a proposal. Then I go in there and I download it and I look through it, and I'm I'm just checking making sure that you've hit all of the all of the main categories in your narrative and that they're in the right order um, again I'm going to look at the staffing narrative and the budget narrative to make sure I don't review what you've written or what your research is going to be because that's not my expertise I'm detail oriented I make sure that you've hit all the points um, I'm here to help you we've got a great team of people um, and we're all on the same team so uh, I'm just making sure that 
you're set up correct and you're set up for success. If you've got a good proposal, they're going to see you've got all the all the components. <clears throat> Alrighty, so that was um, pretty much it on the on the walkthrough. If there's any were there any questions on the on the proposal submission? And if you have any questions or if you're in the middle of a submission and it starts acting weird on you, just give me a call. Um, there, there's always little kinks here and there in the um, info ready system. Don't let it freak you out or anything because I can get on the computer with you on the computer and I can, t I can tie into your, to your proposal and we can go through things together. And if, if we can't figure it out, I'll just have you back out of it and I'll call info ready and we'll get it fixed. And then I'll let you know to get back into it. So before we submit the proposal, would it be possible for you to go see what we prepared? Or do, do we need to submit it before you see? I can go in. Okay. Um, if you are unsure about something, give me a call and I'll look at it with you. Or submitted to, uh, prior to the soft deadline. Yeah. Because then prior. she'll look at yeah, it. Yeah. You know, as soon as I get a submission, and I haven't gotten any yet, <laughs> as soon as I get a submission, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to take a look at it. Um, you can shoot me an email and say, I'm going to submit this. I have a question about this. Can you ch can you double check this area and make sure that, that it's correct? No, I, I think um, I'm looking at the seed funding here. Um, in the whole, what is this one? Uh, fiscal year request for proposals, ARI. And the seed proposal looks like it's available for pretty much any reason whatsoever. It's just, you know, limited amount, no matching required. But I think one of you guys said the present state will be only, it's only allowed for new tenure track faculty. First two First two years. No, it, it's not just Fresno State. It's well, no, yeah. no. But I mean, but I mean, uh, please check with your campus ARI with some specific information. So, like, that, that there's no restriction here not under the seed funding that says the first two years or anything in this little paragraph. So, for Fresno State, it's it's tenure track first two. Yeah, well, two of the first three years. Yeah. It varies a little bit by campus to campus, but we also have a one page campus procedure rules and regs where the dean sort of enforces it and that's been in place forever and that's that, that's what i remember so yeah. when i was reading through it i was like but that's all i thought because yeah. um, that... it's left to the discretion of the dean on certain issues okay. and that's one of them yeah um, that addendum to the to the ppm is in your handouts it's in your folder uh, it says fresno state ari campus policy and procedure So, I have a question for the seed grant. Can you apply for two years if you know that it's going to be a two-year project, or is it just a one-year? Just year? a one-year. And the follow-up yeah. question is: Can the, the first year and the second year be related, or does it have to be a completely different? Absolutely, it can be related, yeah. and you can get a no-cost extension. Okay. So you could yeah. conceivably get funded for two years over a three-year period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Which is done. Yeah. Quite often. Okay. Where, where is that agenda? Um, it's in your. It's in your handouts. There's a. I know I gave you guys so much today. <laughs> so there's the the first page. It has your ARI proposal deadlines. The second page is your Fresno State campus policy and procedures. And it goes over types of applications, the allowable costs, the travel, and then our campus soft deadline. I'm pretty sure. No, I, I yeah. believe it is. I'm yeah. Just, um, are you I'm looking not, in the PPM or, the, or anything? I just want clarification. Oh, here, um, actually, I might very well. Oh, look at that. I've got it up. Seed funding, page seven. So it might not be in the PPM. Seed funding. That's where I was. Yeah. Yeah. 
page seven of the uh, ARI. Well, yeah, you know what? You're, you're absolutely correct. Um, it does not say that. And I'm, um, but that is the case, and that's we, actually it's it's the case for the whole because because it's seed money for new faculty. So I'll talk with uh, David still about that so that it gets corrected in next year's call call I, on PPM. I, I think the reason it's not in the master policy and procedures is it would be considered to be an infringement on how you would handle your own campus seed proposal and funding process. For example, there is a campus uh, that has passed this, uh, what is it called, new investigator, new investigator fund? funding. And it's kind of seed grants on steroids. It's a right. combination of you got to get matched, but it's for new faculty and you can get up to $25,000. There's some nuances to it. But you only need 75% match. And it's, it's a little bit. <laughs> well, I think there is kind of a little bit covered there when it says, please check with your campus ARI office for yeah. specific information and available funding, if any, for this type of application. So. But, and it should be spelled out in there because it is spelled out in the new investigator funding right. that must be first through fourth year tenure track faculty. And that it should be um, first through third year tenure track with, with you know, it's a also, maximum of two in the first three years. It's also covered in the new faculty orientation uh, ARI intro <clears throat> presentation that Carrie and I do periodically for new faculty we talk about the seed grant funding so this is our campus timeline um, in one of your handouts uh, well your, one of your handout packets we've got your deadline your proposal deadlines this just is your timeline right now you should be checking in with in, info ready and create your login move through it download your your documents that you're going to be needing to complete um, send your letter of intent to Bill, to pre-award, to your department chair. Throw me in on that as well. Um, you've discussed the proposed project with the appropriate parties, your chair, the center director, um, research and graduate studies, and with Bill, the campus coordinator. Lining up your match funding, getting your letters of support from your donors, drafting your proposal sections on, and working on your forms and attachments and the project director should be meeting with researching uh, sponsored programs to finalize the budget and your PIP. November 10th is your system pre-proposal campus deadline at 11.59 p.m. November 13th is the system pre-proposal hard deadline with uh, Pomona. So, um, yeah, that you, you then, Sometime between, sometime that first week of December is when you get a letter from Pomona for your system pre-proposal, inviting you to submit a full proposal. Uh, January 13th is the last day to request a budget appointment with research and graduate studies. February 4th is our soft deadline in info ready for your, uh, for review and revisions, that's when I'll go through and check for the, the layout, the content, and you'll have until February 15th, if I've sent anything back for you or requested anything from you, to get that information to me um, so that we can upload it and get the changes submitted. February 20th is gonna be the hard deadline on campus because we have an approval process. And if we don't have everything submitted by the 20th we don't have time to route for approvals especially if there's a glitch somewhere if you're doing some research on the farm and you haven't talked with the farm manager for instance um, the farm manager is going to be put in on that routing and i'm going to get a phone call saying i'm not going to have that field available um, that they're talking about uh, nobody's talked to me about this and then it slows things down. So we have that six day cushion to work out the kinks. Um, and that also saves re, uh, pre-award um, a lot of headaches. Um, sometimes there'll be some budget issues between February 4th and February 15th that you'll have to go back with pre-award on to, to, to straighten out. But for the most part, by February 4th, um, pre-award should be going, Whew, we're done. <laughs> 
but nothing is going to be accepted <clears throat> after February 20th. We can't fast track um, the approval chain because it's it goes to me, then it goes to pre award, and then it goes to um, your department chair, then it goes to the center director, it goes to the farm manager if you're doing something on the farm, then it goes to Bill, and then it goes to the dean. So, but everybody has to, and, and they all look at it. It doesn't just um, is this okay for me to, to approve it? They are actually looking at the proposals. So here's the uh, review and award process. Early April is when the review panel will be meeting. Late April, conditional awards will go out. We like, your, uh, we like you and we want to fund you. Um, we just need you to fix your budget or we need you to give us more evidence of economic impact or the methodology was a little bit vague on this, that type of thing. Get those to us um, and then they'll be re-reviewed. Mid to late May, award letters go out. I think that we had 95, 98% of the award letters out by the first week of June. Uh, we had a few stragglers and then we had some things that were not able to get matched so we were able to send out award letters later on to other projects. July 1st is your project start date. August 30th, for your, mat as your match verification must be complete. September 30th, cash match must be at foundation. If, and it spells out in your award letter if you get awarded. Um, if you don't meet the match verification deadlines, um, the dean has the option to pull the funding and go to somebody else who has uh, who is able to meet the deadlines. You've been awarded. Now what? You will receive your award letter from Dean Neff and Bill late May or early June. If this is your first ARI award, there's a process to complete before you're given an approval to expend. Don't go out there and start hiring your students yet. Um, your project will have a start date of July 1st. You won't be able to start the expenditures until you have your cash and in-kind match verified and signed off and your cost center set up at foundation. You've completed your project meeting um, and final budget approval summary and it's been signed off by everybody. And we generally have the cash and in-kind match forms and final budget summary being signed concurrently, but everybody's looked at them before we got to that stage. The campus point per person, that's me. I review the cash and in-kind match documents, again, because sometimes we miss something, and the final budget summary and any budget revisions, just to make sure that everything is okay. And then I will e email out an approval to expand your funds, and it goes to the PI, it goes to the center admin coordinator, it goes to the campus coordinator, it goes to the pre-award and post-award analyst, and what I forgot to put on here is it also goes to the center director. If any of these have not happened, you don't have approval to expend. Work closely with your center administrative assistant and the post award analyst. So work closely with the center admin and Nathan. When you've been awarded, your first phone call should be to the center admin and um, your second phone call should be to Nathan. So um, if you have any questions on this. Do you have any questions in general? All right then, let's go out there and submit some proposals. <laughs> Again, give us a call, email, and use your center admins. I know that they're new. They don't, they're gonna, any questions that you have for your center admins, if they don't know the answers, they'll contact Bill and I, but this is their learning curve as well. So um, if you use your center admins or if you send us an email, send us an email to the center admin and copy Bill and I, then she knows that you've reached out to all of us. She'll try and answer the question or she'll email Bill and I and she'll ask us, how do I answer this? Or how, where do I find this information for them? So use your center admins. Um, the more you use your center admins, 
the quicker they're going to be well versed in ARI and they will know it forwards and backwards by the end of the season. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs>